Simply Scuba presents the Deco Stop Podcast. Hi everybody and welcome to the Deco Stop Podcast. I'm Mark. There's a loud car just driven past my house. Uh, I'm joined as ever with my bestest sort of, I guess he's a friend. It's it's Sean. Uh, default friends. Work. Default. <laughs> he's a friend from work, as Thor would say. <laughs> he's a- He's a friend from work. He's a friend from work. <laughs> yes. Hello, guys. I have come back. Um, they have allowed me to continue on Deco Stop. So thank you very much. This is not a pre recorded message. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're here to talk about scuba diving and interesting stuff. Um, so jumping in with uh, Simply Scuba website updates. Uh, so a few things that I noticed over the week was the, uh, the Cressy Nano mask has dropped on the website. Uh, it's not a new mask, it's just, it's popped up on the website uh, along with the pro star package which is quite good if you're wanting to get into snorkeling it was very very popular this uh, pro star package it's mask fins and snorkel and it comes in like a snorkeling bag or at least it used to two or three years ago the last time i was in a warehouse hmm. um so yeah if you're thinking about just getting started getting into it then yeah this is a great like starting point for either snorkeling or for scuba diving as well um you might sort of progress if you start to get into it and get some nicer stuff but if you're just starting out it's a great place to start uh right now here at simply scuba we have a special offer on the aqualung axiom bcd and the i300 dive computer wow um so they 100% are off at- it's 100 percent off guys take it <laughs> Take the keys to our warehouse <laughs> and run with it. Take it all, but for a limited time only. Yes. Um, uh, no, I forget what the actual numbers are. But, uh, um, seven. Yeah, they're very cheap. That's a good it's, number. It's basically seven. if if you were if you were ever umming and ahhing between the the Pro HD and the Axiom, which is a, a great upgrade uh, on the Pro HD, it's like twenty quid more now. So it's it's kind of a no brainer. Um, mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and the uh, and the i three hundred dive computer a great uh, sort of simple mm-hmm. all rounder, uh, large screen, very easy to use, and um, just tough as nails. Uh, I actually have one on my desk with me at the moment. That's great. Um, you should show everyone so they can not see it. Here it is. <laughs> wow. I'll, I'll do some a- ASMR stuff oh. by like. There you go. That's that's like the uh, the texture. Right. Of the okay, buttons. Mark. <laughs> Put your trousers back on. I don't know why you did that. That was disgusting. <laughs> bit of stridulation <laughs> technical term oh. <clears throat> anyway um and then it says spring has had an update we yeah. have a new spring um it's now autumn because uh, it's getting a bit colder i it actually rained on me during the um during my dog walk yesterday awesome. that i was surprised at. i love it yeah. i like it's quite nice when i let the cats in in the morning um, and, and they actually come back now, which is really nice of them. Um, and I open up the back, uh, pull my curtains, and I'm like, oh, it's, it's it's still a little bit dark. Oh, this is lovely. <laughs> yeah. Love yeah, it. Yeah, it gets like 8, 8.30 at night, and yeah. it's starting to get dark. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. I- <laughs> this is awesome. I can start My hide- circadian rhythm is getting back into the swing of things. Yeah, yeah. I, I can hide in bushes <laughs> and jump out on people now, and they won't see me. <laughs> I do not do that. I promise. <laughs> um, so yeah, what's happened with springs? We got more more selection of products and more yeah, colours. Basically, I've had a, I've, uh, we got ahead of ourselves a little bit at Simply, so I, I had some time to um, look over some other stuff, and um, I've just spruce things up. Have sp- have kind of a <laughs> spring cleaning. Oh yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> obviously at one point we went, because they've, they've released this eco range. I'm like, wicked, we're going to do that, you know, safety conscious. We mm. we, we want to do that safety conscious, eco conscious. We want to do that. Um, and then they mm. literally, it was just like, oh, cool. They were like, yeah, well, every week or every couple of weeks, we'll put new colours up. We'll do this. They didn't do any of that. Um, <laughs> so it was just like, have this in black. Have this in white. Yeah, they were very here's, monochromatic, here's weren't they? a weird, <laughs> greyy, bluey, weird colour. You're like, cool. Mm. Um so I basically kind of switched everything back to um, how it was before. Mm. So yeah, the, you can get yeah, some traditional some, some colours and stuff like that, uh, which is really okay. really cool. And obviously we've got our cracking design that's up there. Mm-hmm. You've got your was it Let It Pray that's up there now. And um, yeah, what's the other design that you did? What the bolt snap? No. Oh no! It was the. Oh this, no! The zero days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I remember what happened with that one. I I paused it. 
Sorry, no, <gasps> no one bought it, so it's just like I'll just, I'll just I'll charge that. Well, we me. never really told anyone that no. we released it. Well, <laughs> well, well, that's a good point. Um, guys, we've got this new T-shirt that we've taken. Well, not taken down. I put it in the art drive. It's still there. <laughs> We've got to do better with our spring store, but I've got more about... We are going to be doing that. We are we are reviving mm-hmm. it a little bit, but I'll talk more about that later. Okay. But yeah, that's basically cool. it. So <clears throat> you've got classic designs, more colours, more colourways, mm-hmm. all that sort of thing. Although there's one really annoying thing. So for our Narcosis uh, design, yeah, mm. it puts it on a stainless steel water bottle. And I'm like, I don't want it on the stainless steel water bottle. Mm-hmm. So I remove mm-hmm. it from the listing because it's a mm. white bottle with yep. narcosis written in white so you can't even see it yeah so, pointless so it's obviously a glitch in the matrix and <laughs> i literally every time i go on there i unselect it save it update the oh, page no. and it's there still so i it's don't know that... i don't know whether that's so again that might be talked to someone about springs but where I've... someone will buy it yeah <laughs> i guess it's the white well... metal yeah, a white water bottle with white text yeah. on it. <laughs> it's a limited edition. It's really good. But yeah, so but yeah, other than that, yeah. So new colorways, new designs. Okay. Uh, I've got the, the the Kraken I released as a sticker, which I thought was pretty cool. And mm. um, one, yeah. I looked at the Cave Shark because the cave the Cave Shark yep. is one of our most popular designs. And yep. I, I looked at the die cut sticker, and for some I don't know mm. for some reason it was up there for like seventeen dollars. I'm like, what? What? That's yeah, that's so a bit much. much for a sticker. So here's, <laughs> here's eight bucks, so that's like four yeah, or five yeah. quid. <clears throat> yeah, anyway, yeah, that's so yeah, that's the springs anyway. Okay, if you're if you're watching this on YouTube, then uh, there will be a, a banner underneath this video, which will show a few of the designs. But if you click on the banner, it will take you to our like home page on Springs, so you can check out all of the designs, pick and choose colors, all that kind of stuff, and buy them all. Yeah, uh, and onto the green initiative. Um, so once a week, we like to talk about the um, how eco friendly our our company is. Um, Sean has done this week's. Um, well, I just I, I just filled forgot, it in basically. for you, mate. Oh, fine, I'll do you it. You did, you did, but it's all to do with hiking stuff. It is. Um, so it's the company. Oh, you, oh, Hold on, the me. North Face no, oh, um, no. has. Uh, <clears throat> So, um, so if you didn't know, we have uh, a few sort of sister companies, and one of them is called Webtogs. Webtogs deals with uh, sort of hiking and camping and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the North Face, which you probably recognise, is quite a big brand, uh, has yeah. apparently joined Webtogs in the uh, the plastic cutback. All the chavs um, wear it, mate. All the chavs in England wear North Face, and this all stolen. sell the brand, mate. <laughs> mate, when I worked in, um, I won't name the, I won't name the company, but when I worked in uh, retail, in a, a high street a, retail, a high street retailer for outdoor, everything North Face got nicked by <laughs> by me to sell it on eBay. <laughs> That's why the company went out of sight. No, literally, mate. And they're like, oh, like I remember one of them. Like they literally took a row. They looked at me, and said, "You're gonna chase me." I'm like, "No, it's, I'm not paid enough. No, I don't yeah. care. I just got this for mine." <laughs> Whatever. I'm seeing that more and more online. People literally just walking into stores and just filling yeah. up just plastic bags and then just walking, walking out. out. And no one, because in in certain states or certain counties or whatever, if it's under a certain value, it's like not even a misdemeanor or something. Yeah. So it's like the the police aren't even going to investigate it because it's just not worth their time. It's like oh, straight. That's yeah. not a good thing to announce <laughs> yeah no um when i when i was the assistant manager of one of the stores uh a guy caught someone thieving and they locked mm. them in uh, the staff room yeah yeah to like they were like yeah and i had to actually give him a written warning for doing that it's just like dude you shouldn't do that you, yeah you put yeah, yourself in trouble <laughs> You don't have those kind of powers. Yeah. You're not the police. Yeah. <laughs> I had to tell him. So, but, I, but I say to him, like, it doesn't matter, mate. It's only a 300 quid jacket. They'll get it back on insurance yeah. or what. It doesn't literally, your life yeah. is not worth that hassle. But anyway, no. completely going off tangent. Yeah. Keep Comple- kidnapping charges we got onto. <laughs> um, so anyway, so yeah, the, the North Face has uh, has joined in with the, uh, the plastic cutback, which is all about reducing uh, sort of plastic because especially with clothing, which is what North Face focuses on. Every single T-shirt, every single, I don't know, pair of socks, whatever they sell, um, is in a plastic bag. And what's the point? 
Yeah. I mean, obviously, the point is to keep it neat and tidy so it stays nice and clean and uh, sort of easily accessible um, so customers don't get upset when it's, like, folded weirdly. But, yeah, they're, they're reducing the amount of uh, the plastic, and that's something that we're looking with some of our brands. A few of them have already um, sort of done it. You look at Apex, you look at Fourth Elements, uh, pretty much all of their stuff nowadays comes in either um, paper bags or or cardboard, so it's much more eco-friendly. there is a, uh, a YouTube video that we, um, or, or that WebTogs did. Um, we're going to link that down in the description below. Um, and yeah, if you head over to WebTogs, uh, if you're into your sort of hiking and whatnot, there's a, a blog specifically about it, um, which again, we'll, we'll, we'll link down in the comments below. No, yeah. down in the description below, sorry. Yeah. It's of YouTube. Of if YouTube. you listen, yeah, if you listen to this on uh, on Spotify, sorry, you have to head over to YouTube. Yeah, and then whilst you're over there, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, Please. and share it with Thank your you. scuba diving friends. Thank you very much. Um, and Thank then you. when you go over to watch the Web Talks video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and watch all my videos over there. Thank mm. you. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was a cool thing that, you know, the, the whole plastic cut back and us reducing our landfill and the fact that now that bigger brands are getting on on board and then yeah hopefully mm. you know we can oh again the, the diving community and the diving um general like manufacturers are fantastic with this eco front you know obviously you've got full filament yeah. apex uh x deep mm. most of their stuff comes in cardboard that can be recycled mm. or if it does end up in landfill it's not going to be there in 70 to 100 years time it's going to be broken yeah. down and, it's going to break down yeah you know what i mean it's not like that <clears> but yeah so it's good anyway yeah so that's that's the green initiative uh social time mm-hmm. oh this is weird i've got i'm going on the tail end so sean over to you for social updates. <laughs> cool yeah. wicked so youtube mm-hmm. uh i actually put two votes up so the first vote is I for know, the I saw that. Yeah. So <laughs> the first vote is for the, the the general, the normal, the normal, the normal vote for the surface interval. So mm. as of recording on Friday morning, uh in th- last place is the best drift diving tips, which I thought would actually okay. be winning. Uh yeah, I thought that would be a bit higher. They're quite okay. a good one. Uh number two uh, in second place is why twin set diving is awesome. And number three, mm-hmm. and number, oh, sorry, in first place, not number three, uh, five things to consider when diving a reef. Now, I thought that would be the mm. lowest one, but apparently. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like a token filler. Yeah. You're just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But that one's, but oh, okay. it's only winning by like, so that's what 36%, and why twin set diving is awesome is at 34 So it's actually anyone's game at the moment. And mm. I was well surprised with last week's result because we all said. That it would yeah. be the training agency one, but it's wrecked on me. <coughs> again. That was a bit of a, that was a that was a fluff piece, as we like to say. Mm. Yes. So yeah, but yeah. So anyway, head over to um our if on YouTube, head over to our community tab, um, and then if you want to vote for that, you can do. And the second vote I did. So basically, Mark, looking through the analytics as I as I love to do. I love to do a deep dive in an, analytics. The video. You like the numbers. Yeah, I do. You're, I do. you're, you're all about the numbers. I'm all aren't about you, the numbers and the graphs. When they go up, when they go down, <laughs> I just ignore them or have a panic attack. Yeah, no, delete, yeah, undo. I do. <coughs> Burn it, throw the Mac out the computer. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, but yeah, so obviously, Uni Guni, that video keeps popping up. Now, the reason why it keeps popping up is because it gets shared on like third party websites and stuff. But mm-hmm. it's always, always there. Now, it's one of those videos where it's a bit. It's clickbaity. It's very classic, classic YouTube. Not necessarily yeah. what we shoot now. But I was, I just put it up there. So I just said, just out of curiosity, would you like to create more videos like this? Um, it's had 151 votes again as of recording, um, and 86% say yes. So they want that more style video, but they want it a bit longer. And in the comments, it's they all say, well, not all of them, um, <clears throat> yes do it but make it a little bit longer if you can which we would anyway um but they want yeah. me to do the vo for it cool i'm on board with that yeah of course. I, I knew you would be, but, <laughs> but it would be a tangent so it would be like maybe <clears throat> so we did you, we did dive sites and stuff like that so maybe it mm. would just be a bit of a bit of fun so obviously this is a video about a specific place so if we do this going forward which you quite clearly want i might talk about a specific dive site or something that's a bit quirky in the water, a little bit off the cuff. That isn't 
that is clickbaity, but yeah, again, it's all mm. it's all voiceover stuff. But yeah, I, I was just I was just amazed because again, that every time, every analytics, every every you look in the top twenty of our videos each month, Unigoni is either in the top ten or it's within the top twenty, and I'm like. Yeah, Stop. yeah, but it, it kind of hits that like conspiracy theory it does. Um, note as well. So that's perfect. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. But yeah, so I'm going to work that into it. Um, what was we in September? Uh, what I what I'll end up probably doing is because uh, we're on a holiday. Probably won't be till the beginning of next year. I think. I think that's when I'll do it. I'll script it. I'll get stuff edited. I'll get the ideas rolling. So I'll talk to mm. you, Mark, about what what. what possibly we can be done on whether you know i'm doing things right and stuff like that so maybe in the new year we'll get those we'll get those okay. videos yes that's the thing if i can get them back lot edited and then they can just kind of go live whatever and then i can replace mm -hmm. the surface interval and then i'll take over the channel and then it'll be about me scuba diving channel with a guy who's only done pool dives <laughs> I'll allow it. And you'll be like, ah, oh, Sean, talk about regulators. Uh, it goes in your mouth <laughs> and you breathe it. And, and that's what Darth Vader uses. Thank you. Goodbye. Ba balance. Balance. <laughs> yeah, it means you can balance it on your finger. That's what that means. <laughs> Environmental sealed. Uh, it seals the environment. Yeah. Mm. I, I it stops, do know. holds back global warming. It does. I, I do know. I do know. A little bit more about that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> swiftly move on. Um, so I know I quickly did a throwaway last week, but from the 1st to the 10th of September, there's going to be no unboxing videos. There was a glitch in the Matrix when it came to us <laughs> ordering stock. Um, but it's I know. Pe people are like, oh, why, why are you doing the new in but not showing anything? It's like, yeah, we, we would show you the things. <laughs> and it's just, there's we, a, we can't. Yeah, <laughs> we can't because there was a glitch in the Matrix. So um, obviously mm. they're pre-filmed. So this has been going on in in the background for a while now. So let, let me just let me just peel back this yeah. this green curtain and show you behind the why scenes. Why is it so? <laughs> why is it greasy? <laughs> yeah. I swear. It's a lot damper than yeah. I expected. Why does it smell of mould? <laughs> mm, nice. <laughs> Oh, I should really get that clean. But yeah, no, basically there's been a back end. <laughs> Obviously it hasn't affected people buying from the website. It's been more us ordering stuff in. So from Yeah, the, yeah. We we basically we have this behind the scenes way of ordering stuff mm. which doesn't screw up all of the sort of the sales figures and stuff and yep. and that basically hiccuped. Um so we couldn't order any products and get it shipped to ourselves. Yeah. Um but it seems that we've identify the issue and we can again do so, it. i mean yeah I, I literally have um that i300 on my desk and doing a video for that awesome um, and there's a few other bits uh in my studio so yeah awesome. when they'll they'll be back don't worry they will be back but from the 1st to the 10th of september it will basically what we're going to be doing is that time slot we're just going to share some of the the more the more popular ones or the most interesting products that we filmed over the past mm -hmm. year um, just to one fill that time slot and, and also as well so we've got catch up time because I don't want to have to be editing videos and then them going live pretty much the day after you know what I mean I don't want to yeah, get into yeah, that yeah that afternoon I, yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I, I don't want to get into that again I've been there done that never again we can mm -hmm. have the next 10 days from, from the 1st of September to the to the 10th to, to kind of get things rolling again so yeah you've got that um, and also as well, I know I mentioned Teesprings uh, at the beginning of the website updates and stuff like that. But uh, the Surface Interval, again, will be sponsored by our Spring Saw. Or I did say Teespring. I meant Spring. It doesn't matter. It's all the same sort of thing. thing. Yeah. It's all the same thing. <laughs> um, obviously, we, we now and again, we dabble in that, don't we? Teesprings pops in, it pops out, pops in, it pops out. Obviously, Surface Interval was and is sponsored by Empora as well as Two Minute Beach Clean. Um, but we're also going to be swinging uh, or popping in springs in there as well. Um, but what mm. I will do for every surface interval as of next week, I will be putting a cheeky discount code in there. So even if the mm. video itself isn't sponsored by springs, our che uh, the cheeky discount code will be pinned in the description for you to use. So uh, I'm not going to tell you how much it is or what it is. You have to click on the video and you know obviously click like click on the ads buy some stuff from the ads so then we get money then go back click on uh, our teespring store tab then type in the code 
and then hey presto you get some money or if you want to do us a solid and not use the code that would be fantastic so we get more money nice one cheers um <laughs> but yeah so there's going to be a nice little cheeky discount code going live for every surface interval for our spring store um which again like i said earlier there's there's a bit more there now so it was a bit it was a bit limited to what there was and hopefully as well there is another design that is pending that i've got a, that i do have to put up there so that'll be up there probably in the middle of september which is pretty cool um that's mm -hmm. so that's youtube instagram not really much to go on everyone's loving still the i think we found we found the niche we know what works on that platform. We know what you guys and girls like over there. Uh, and the growth is going up and up and up, which is really, really good to see. Lots of likes, lots of loves, lots of comments. Um, yeah, really good. And the people that are tagging or hashtagging uh, Simply Scuba and the ones that we actually, um, you know, put on the on, on our feed, you know, they're replying back. Thanks for the tag. You know what I mean? It's it's good. It's not like anyone's going, oh, could you not do this? I mean, they wouldn't do that anyway because it's basically oh, yeah. free it's, it's healthy. It. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? With his, and also they we, can't we stop us not. because of the yeah. uh, Instagram murkiness. If someone says, can you take this down? You just go, no, you can't do anything about it. Um, so, sorry. Thanks, Instagram. Yeah, that's it. Conditions. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Instagram. The most dodgiest. Ugh. Yeah. Yes, just for future reference, girls and guys, I've probably mentioned this before, but as soon as you upload an image or a video to YouTube, not YouTube, to uh, Instagram <laughs> or even Facebook, I'm pretty pretty sure it's probably the same thing over there, you no longer own the rights to that image. Yeah, um, yeah. It's really dodgy and it's <sighs> awful. But yeah, anyway, growth is getting really, really well. Um, if you don't follow us over there on Instagram, do it or just, yeah, or cry do it you know what i mean uh, simply scuba um again we're not just uh, a lot of retailers a lot of scuba diving retailers all they do is put posts about uh, here's a product this product's here this product's here we've got this product it's a very samey yeah so i've we've worked we've worked well within the algorithm we know what works it's all about lifestyle shots so yeah if you want a bit of product but majority is lifestyle shots for a bit of inspiration to get you in the water it's definitely worth uh, following us over there. And lastly, I'll be very quickly, because I know I'm blabbering on now, a podcast is doing really well. Uh, August at the moment is trending to be our biggest month ever so far um, since we've started filming or, you know, doing the podcasts, which is really, really good to, really, really good to see. But yeah. So again, with the podcasts, subscribe, follow, or however you listen to us. If there's a rating system, rate us. You know what to do, you guys. It's the if you listen to podcasts, every other podcast says exactly the same thing. Please rate us. Please follow us. The more numbers we have, um, the more information we can give to people. Um, yeah. Because it's the wild, wild west. Still, for some reason, yeah, it's yeah. still the wild, wild west. <laughs> I think people people often instead of complain is like oh why do they keep sort of saying oh like and subscribe and it's like because it works yeah um, and it's it's literally happened to me I was watching a channel and I was enjoying their content and just like watching it and then it wasn't until they specifically said oh don't forget to subscribe to my channel I was like oh yeah I haven't subscribed bonk Don't. so yeah. I'm sorry if you are already subscribed. Thank you, obviously, but um, yeah, we we unsubscribe. Have to keep then it. resubscribe. That make yourself feel better. I don't think that's how the numbers work, but yeah. <laughs> no. But what anyway, is good, on to uh, oh, 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 no. can I just can I just say oh, one thing about on YouTube? Our subscriber yeah. rate ratio was really really bad. So more people that were unsubscribe for watching our videos which is always going to be the thing but we've actually crossed mm. over now where over 30 percent of our subscribers watch our videos now which is really really good normally okay. it's like like 90 percent of people that watch your videos aren't subscribed yeah, yeah having yeah, a yeah. having a 30 percent threshold is really really good so subscribe yeah, no, that's pretty good anyway yes. shut Thank up you. sean shut up <laughs> Um, so onto news that caught my interest this week. Uh, so the first one comes from a. Um, this is the the first recorded um, sort of account of parthenogenesis, uh, which Sean is ready to do a five minute discussion on. Uh, baby Jesus, is that, that's the one. <laughs> Basically, yeah. so this was from an aquarium in uh, in Italy called Aquario Cala Gon Gognone oh, uh, in yeah. Sardinia. Yeah, I love that one. Ah, see, yeah. <clears throat> and um, basically they've had this shark tank 
um, which for the past 10 years has only ever had female sharks swimming around in it. Females, all girls, they they looked up their skirts um, yep. and yeah, they are all female. And um, a, a male shark has just appeared. And uh, and it's basically oh, he has risen. <laughs> uh, they they named him uh, Ispera. Um, I'm just going to see if that Google translates into bet, anything. It bet um, a Google translate to Jesus or the chosen one, Neo, Zeus, Hey Zeus. Uh, well, from Malt- in Maltese it means wait. Um, no, um, in Italian. No, it just means ispera. Uh, it's it's just a word. Um, but yeah, it is basically a a clone of the mother. And um, yeah, as it turns out, that Jurassic Park was one hundred percent correct. It just it it happens. I'm not going to say the word. Nature finds a way. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, it's effectively where one um, egg cell, if it's an immature egg cell, it kind of acts a bit like a sperm cell. Okay. And in very incredibly rare circumstances, this happens. But yeah, when that bumps up against a like a mature egg cell, it basically fertilizes it with itself. So it's basically a clone of the mother. Um, but... I'm not really sure where the Y chromosome comes into it because this was a male, so I I don't really know. Uh, coming from a Christian family, I'm not a Christian anymore, <laughs> but reading in the Bible, yeah, we're always waiting for the second coming of Christ. <clears throat> okay, but no one said that it would be human. So yeah, he is Jesus. I mean it's apparently this does commonly occur in like lower plants and um, invertebrates like sort of uh, insects and wasps and bees and stuff but for sort of bigger vertebrate animals mm. yeah it's it's very unusual i think it has kind of happened before and they think it's happened before okay. but it's hard to really specifically say boom yes but this is a fairly controlled environment a tank which has had no male sharks anywhere near it in 10 years and then all of a sudden huh there's a little baby boy i wonder where that's come from it's a bit weird that's that's quite interesting the shark kind of looks like a the janitor of the aquarium (laughs) so i don't know whether he went in the tank he's got the same receding hairline yeah it's a bit weird (laughs) There's something slightly human about him. <laughs> That's weird, um, mate. That's next, cool, though. Next news um, was quite an interesting uh, medical journal uh, on uh, on Medscape. You can read it completely free. You just have to uh, sort of log in, like create an account. Um, and it's all to do with uh, with PFOs, basically like hole in the heart. Mm. And it's it's a study has basically shown that if you have the hole in the heart um, uh, sealed up surgically, it reduces your risks of decompression sickness. Uh, awesome. So it's it's kind of been that very grey subject in that a lot. They basically they um, they studied a whole bunch of uh, of scuba divers who like either stayed around for years and years or only did it sort of once and uh, sort of on holiday, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, sort of with the uh, the PFO. And they focused on like two different groups. One group was the the ones that had the treatments to fix and close the hole in the heart, and the other ones were basically told to just be careful and uh, and be a bit more conservative. Mm-hmm. Um, it's quite a common um, uh, sort of recommendation of like, yeah, you can go scuba diving, but because of your PFO just take it easy. And they basically found that people who still took it conservatively still had cases of decompression sickness but actually when you compared it to similar data from people who have had surgery to uh, to fix it greatly reduced um the chances of you getting a decompression sickness so it it kind of confirms that yeah pfo has a huge effect and is basically when when the blood flow is kind of mixing between two halves of your heart it's going from the sort of 
the previously circulated blood to the oxygenated blood and if it's kind of mixing around then yeah of course all those dissolved gases are going to sort of mix and mingle mm. so um yeah it's quite interesting i it's a lot um if you don't have a sort of science background it's a lot to uh, to sort of get through but it is very interesting and if you do suffer from a um a pfo it's definitely worth sort of reading through and um yeah even though you think you're being conservative chances are you might still be having mild decompression yeah. uh, sort of illness so yeah what if you fill in all the holes of your heart every single one not just the hole in the heart that like you fill every single one <laughs> and then then decompression sickness technically won't exist <laughs> And neither will anything else. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. All all of a sudden, your dodgy knee doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> exactly. I suppose your IBS just just stops. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything stops. Um, you lose a bit of weight. <laughs> you lose a lot of weight over yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> your hair grows a bit more. You get longer, well, well, like nails. Don't yeah, nice. yeah. Apparently, yeah, yeah. Apparently, your hair continues to grow after you die. That's that's a weird thought. <laughs> Don't know, mate. Weird. Anyway, um, on to uh, the next news story. So this is uh, Sea World's uh, one of Sea World's remaining killer whales has died. Um, this was Amaya, and um, she apparently just died. Just sudden, unexpected. Uh, I think they are going to do a, a necropsy. Um, Did she not leave like a note? Autopsy. <laughs> no. Um, well, <laughs> none, none that uh, SeaWorld has, has released. Yeah, they're but, burning, um, mate. They've burnt that. They don't mm. want... So they say it's going to take a couple of weeks. Um, I mean, this was on... When was this? This was a few days ago. Uh, this was about a week ago now. Um, so, yeah, I imagine they're going to uh, sort of release Ugh. some kind of report on what happened. Um, but, Sad, yeah, mate. Amaya. I think she was the youngest as well. Really? Um, yeah, I think I read that somewhere. She she was the youngest one. And, uh, and ever since um, Blackfish was released, obviously, I don't... They can't get any new whales, is that right? That's it. So as far as far yeah. from what I can remember, yeah, they they have what they've got, but they can't but get any it. new ones. Yeah, that. But that's it. And then mm. once they get rusty and old, they yeah, send them off to the farm, kind of it. the killer whale mm. farm. They they just have to get like animatronics. Um, as we said a couple of weeks ago, they they got those like mechanical fish nowadays, which that's is getting shark. pretty good. That's China. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That baby shark is Chinese. That's one of the Chinese drones. Yeah. <laughs> They're um, trying to infiltrate Italian aquariums because they <laughs> feed them, they feed the animals meatballs <laughs> and the tank's filled with espresso. Proper espresso. Yeah, proper <clears> espresso. <throat> not, not espresso. No, oh, don't, don't. I've got some whatever espresso, that is. whatever. <laughs> it's espresso, mate. It's much better, really. Uh, anyway, sticking with um, sticking with dolphins, but now we're moving to uh, to Cornwall. I think this is here in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's basically a a really friendly but overly friendly dolphin here in uh, here in Cornwall. Um, so people are saying, yeah, it, it might seem kind of fun to go out and like swim and play with it, but be careful, it, it could actually kill you. Um, maybe not intentionally, but. I Even know, inadvertently. It it's got a knife, it with machetes. <laughs> it's got a laser on it. It's a dolphin with a laser. Everyone's so worried about <laughs> sharks with lasers. No one ever thinks about the dolphin with a laser. <laughs> uh, so this is a bottlenose dolphin uh, who has been given the nickname Nick. Um, and <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Sorry, <Sean. laughs> Nick the dolphin. Nick the dolphin. Uh, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... Basically, a lot of people have been uh, sort of playing with it. It swims up to boats and stuff, and, uh, and people have been interacting with it. People get in the water on, like, surfboards and stand-up paddle boards, and it kind of interacts with them and plays with them. But, um, but yeah, people are basically saying, yeah, this is all well and good, but do be careful. Um, it is a wild animal. It's very strong. It's very powerful. It can hold its breath a lot longer than you can um so yeah do do be very careful i mean it, it reminds me of um 
uh, a guy that I used to work with, he um, he helped out at a, a local zoo to do some cleaning, okay. and they left the um, they left the sea lions in the enclosure because they thought, oh, this would be good to, like environmental enrichment. So they're they're like cleaning the enclosure, and it was all going well, and you'd sort of play with the uh, the sea lions. But then when it was time to get out, no, 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 they kept dragging him back into the water, and he's like, oh. I've only got so much air left. I really need help to get out. Because, yeah, you get to the side and they're like, no, grab your fins and pull you back in. You're my new toy, mate. You're my new toy. Yeah, yeah. So when I went to do it, yeah, that they were all, like, (laughs) taken out of the water and they were put in their, like, inside housing or whatever to feed them whilst I was in there cleaning. So it's like, yeah, that that, that makes sense. I'm I'm okay with that. (laughs) Do you reckon somewhere... In, it's got to be in America. Someone's done a hazing. So they've gone to the zoo. Yeah, his first day, give them a toothbrush and some Colgate, and then you put them in the tiger tiger den. Be like, mate, you've got, br- <laughs> you got to brush their teeth. Yeah, yeah, go on. Go on, mate. <laughs> this is your haze, mate. This is the first job. Rookie job only. Good, good old stubby Joe, they call him now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, that's crazy, mate. Yeah, just and also as well in, in that in that news story, like it, yes, he could kill you, but then also as well, if you bash it around, you you know what I mean. You could cause him yeah. harm as well. You know what I mean. Basically, just yeah. don't just leave him alone. No, look, look, but don't touch yes. and don't feed it like cheesy watsits or something because that was a news story from a few weeks back. Uh, too many oh, people yes. were feeding um, dolphins like watsits or cheesy pups, whatever they're called. Uh, and it's like, no, don't. They not only, their natural diet. They only <laughs> like Cheetos and the hot, spicy, <laughs> flaming hot Cheetos, mate. <laughs> flaming again, hot Cheetos. Again, that reminds me of the in is too, where that, that guy feeds a dolphin a hamburger. Or a subway, and just, yeah. Here's a why, subway, why? and it's dead. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. Not their natural diet. Um, anyway, the uh, the final news story I can't actually access because the the link isn't working. Oh, it I've takes got it. Me to some, have you got it? Yeah, I've got it. So basically, we mentioned was it last week that they uh, yeah. a beluga had died. Um, due, uh, basically, it was taken from Canada to Missouri or somewhere. Um, mm. And uh, basically, it was there for a couple of months, and then it died. Um, and then mm. weren't too sure why. Um, just to top it off, another one has died. So a second beluga whale, uh, or is it not just? Oh, it's I mean, the, the headline health. says it's in failing health. Yeah. It's, it's sick. Yeah, basically, Oof. yeah. So it's no, 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 no. It died. It died. Oh, it died. No, it oh, died. Dear. So yeah, they moved it. It fell ill, um, moving to Mystic. And and, yeah. it, and it, 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 it it died there. But the worrying thing is about all of this. So they mm-hmm. were monitoring it and stuff. And they were like, right, okay. Um, we need to get a specialist. And they actually made a call. And they were like, is anyone... <laughs> Is anyone a beluga yeah. specialist, please? Can <laughs> Does you... anyone know anything about belugas? There's like this sixth grader who's yeah. just done like his science fair project on belugas. It's like me. No, <laughs> no you just need to get the um, the guy who scripted all the beluga uh, uh, text from uh, Finding Dory. I mean, Finding he Dory. Wrote, he, he, he wrote <laughs> what the beluga says, so he must know or she. <laughs> They must know how it is, but yeah, no. So basically, guys, just 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 don't move them, leave them. Yeah, yeah. Just just leave them in the wild. Don't even capture them don't, to to start yeah. with. Yeah, Oof. But yeah. Because I didn't know this. Most <sighs> of the belugas that are in aquariums are all owned by um Canada. Sorry, owned. I'm doing air quotes. You can't see me, but they're all owned <laughs> by by or managed, should I say, by by the Canadian. Not the government. What, around the world? Yeah, they are literally all the belugas. Oh. Yeah, they, they, they own the source, mate. Other than the ones that they stole in Russia. Yeah, yeah. But all the ones that get put in um, aquariums and stuff, yeah, they're all owned. I don't know whether it's Vancouver. The Vancouver Aquarium mm. own them. But yeah, they're all owned by someone in Canada, Mr. Beluga. Huh. huh. Which I think is very okay. weird. Anyway, yeah, so that's the news, isn't it? That's, that's fun. What's your product of the week, Mark? Let's, let's, let's swiftly move on to animals let's, dying. Let's, and Let's end it on a high. high uh, um, so, I, so I'm talking about the uh, the Apex VX1 mask. Um, it's a, a lovely mask. If you're in the market for a new dive mask, then yeah, it's definitely worth checking out the uh, the VX1, Victor X-Ray 1. And... Um, 
comes in three different colours, um, black, white, and darker grey, uh, which is kind of cool. Mm. And, um, and you get two different lens options. It's all a single lens mask, frameless design, but you can either get it with uh, just crystal clear glass or you can get it with a UV coating. So it protects your eyes a little bit like sunglasses. Cool. And um, it, it comes in a really nice EVA case uh, compared to the just traditional plastic blocky kind of case. It comes in a nice zipped up uh, EVA case. And you also get the choice of the standard silicone strap or it comes with a neoprene strap as well, which is pretty cool. Nice. Um, and when when you kind of look at it and compare it to uh, the, sort of the really fancy masks, it it's really like inexpensive. You get a lot for your money. Mm. So um, yeah, if you are in the market for a, a new dive mask, it's definitely worth considering. Uh, there's going to be a link down in the description below so that you can check it out. But yeah, for especially for like a um, a UV treated um, mask, yeah, yeah, it is very cheap. So definitely worth uh, worth checking out. Cool. Uh, they're available on our website, simpsonschool.com. Mm. Again, they're going to be linked in the comments in YouTube. Or if you head over to our SoundCloud, uh, there'll be a link to it on there as well. Okay. So, question of the week. Now, I don't mm. know if you've heard of this company before. They're quite big. They're called Disney. Um, Disney? Uh, di dis <laughs> Disney. Dis Disney. Did, did they say... Just, just one knee. Yeah, Disney, Disney. Dis <laughs> Disney. Yeah, they, they, they make fun of people's knees. They okay. do. I get, I get them. But somehow <laughs> they've got into the they've they've tapped the child's market, which is really weird. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so if you don't know, guys and girls, um, if you love Disney, I mean, you probably do know if you do love Disney. Um, literally all over the world, you're no longer going to be going to. As of September, end of September, you will no longer be able to go into. At least the majority, the ninety store, percent, of the yeah. Disney stores they are all shutting down. Brick and mortar Disney stores are closing, mm. and they're a pretty big company to do that. Um, you know what I mean? They're, having those stores, they're always popular. There's always people in them. You know, they're probably very profitable, but due to probably the pandemic and also as well just the way that the world works nowadays, mm. everything is moving online now. Obviously. Now this is we have spoke roughly about this before, but obviously this has also happened to us. Simply Scuba does not have a brick mm. and mortar store, and we probably will no. never ever have a brick and mortar store because of no. what the company, the, the ethos of the company is. It's all about being online. It's about reducing mm. um, the footprint. unnecessary need of footprint. <clears throat> yeah, you know what I mean. It's mm. about reducing all of that. So, will because of Disney doing this, then you're going to get bigger brands doing this, which means then you're going to get less footfall in the high streets. Will this mm. kill the brick and mortar scuba diving store? Now, I'm saying this, there's kind of two parts to this. So you have a store that is physically yeah. just a store. So like the old Simply Scuba store, you just yeah. went there to buy stuff, try stuff on, mm. buy it, and then leave. There wasn't a dive school attached to it. Is it going to be the end for those types of stores? And also as well, if they all die out and the only places that will have stock is going to be dive centres where you learn, obviously most dive centres have a little shop. It might not be the biggest mm. um, because obviously they're investing in training. They're not necessarily investing in buying all the gear or they're going to be limited to the space or what they can sell because obviously, you know, budgets and money and all that sort of thing you know what i mean they're, they're not going to want to put all of their stock or all their money into stock that they potentially are going to be holding for like the next two three years because obviously they don't have the the footfall like a retail outlet does could they actually mm. could this move um or if scuba diving stores you know retailers actually close would this help them would they benefit from these stores closing mm. what, what are I mean, your it's... thoughts overall yeah, I mean, it, it has already been happening for, for years now. Um, a lot of dive centres have been closing mm -hmm. just because yeah, it is harder to uh, to be competitive. Um, I think one thing to remember is that sort of Simply Scuba, A, we used to be a dive centre. That's, that's how mm, we yeah, started. Yeah. And then 
because you had like the teaching side and the retail side selling the equipment and then we just sort of decided to focus purely on just selling the uh, the equipment and that's very very rare there's only a handful of purely uh, sort of retail um, sites out there um, but but nowadays yeah a lot of dive centers are closing which is a, a blessing and a, and a curse at the same time is is that sort of double-edged sword in that if you if you're in a, a town and there are three dive centers then you're going to get a third of the local uh, sort of students or sort of people coming to you it'll probably be a little bit more because people do shop around so they are going to go to each sort of different one but they they usually settle on a favorite and, and kind of stick with that if one or two of the competing stores closes down then of course that's where everybody has to go to the one remaining dive center so it kind of helps um are more are brick and mortar stores dead i don't think so because as much as you have all of these e-courses and you can learn a lot of scuba online you can't learn it all mm -hmm. and it's it's still important to keep that physical tangible um sort of interaction with an instructor i mean sure you could sort of just meet them at the local leisure center uh, to use their pool or whatever or just go down to the beach and meet them there but it's it's still quite nice to to sort of have the dive school the dive center and sort of have it all sort of there and then uh, we also need places that can service regulators and uh, and our equipment. Sure, you can do that via mail nowadays. That's quite an easy one. Um, it's tough. Maybe, I mean, yeah, if you sort of think 10, 15, 20 years into the future, maybe we will have just these sort of, these like hubs um, where you get sort of Amazon is going to sell yeah. you your equipment and then you have Amazon service and they service your equipment and it is just one big monopoly oh. hub. Um, I could easily but, see that I happening. Don't know. I, that's, I, that's kind of a bleak future. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, I believe shopping local is so important and having local trade is mm. important. Um, and there will be, 20 years time, there still will be dive centres around mm. or dive retailers. But yeah, like you say, it kind of be a bit of a hybrid. Um, the future is it's all going to be online no there's going to yeah. if you're going to be purchasing something you're going to be di buying a dive mask a regulator even a wetsuit um, mm. you're going to be buying it online and the thing is a lot of people don't like doing that because it's a generational thing there's going to mm. be a generations that aren't you know when they go scuba diving or when they purchase scuba diving it is done online it's not yeah, done. Yeah. They, they don't go to a store to try on a wetsuit. They they buy it online. It gets shipped to them. If it doesn't fit, then they, you know, they get the next size up. They get the next size down. But what basically yeah. what will end up happening is, is the the websites themselves will be tailored. So you give them as much information about sizing, mm. about fit as physically possible. So then the person can make the right purchase, and then they don't have yeah. to return it. But that it's a generation thing that will happen. My my son Milo. You know, he mm. will grow up purchasing stuff online. It's already happening now. It's it happened to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> although I love local dive centres, and I, and I, and I think local dive schools should still exist because although it's good, you need it for training and all that sort of thing. It's good for the social aspect. Mm. You know, if you're a part of a dive mm. club, yes, you can. Mm. Like you say, you can meet up at your local pool, or you can meet up in on your local beach. But if your dive centre's got a pool. You know what I mean? Mm. A proper dive centre where you're trained. You know yeah. what I mean? You, you know the people. You know the staff. You can get things serviced. But yeah, I think that's going to become a rarity, especially with brand. Like that's the thing with with brands going, leaving the high streets. You get Disney leaving the high street. You know they're only going to have mm. not. They're going to have stores in their flagship. It's all online, um, and mm. also as yeah. well from an environmental point of view, which is I know something that mm -hmm. they, the Internet Fusion like it's actually better for the environment for us not to have brick and mortar stores. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of power, a lot of space uh, mm. sort of taken up sort of on that. So yeah, there, there is that aspect. One thing that I'm seeing sort of more and more is multiple dive centers coming together, mm. creating partnerships 
and one focuses on the retail yeah the other one focuses on the training so they they still have the sort of two separate dive centers it's just yeah you go to one for all your training so they can focus all of their efforts on being the best training dive center mm. possible and then oh yeah you, you want to buy a regulator okay have a chat with these people they're going to sort you out because they can focus purely on that. that because they don't have to worry about all of the um the sort of licensing fees and the insurance and rental bcds and all that kind of stuff they don't have to worry about sort of all of that stuff they can focus purely on equipment sales so they can tailor their crew who work for them that yeah okay you don't specifically have to be an in-status instructor who can do all of these courses as long as you know how to sell a set of regulators and assemble them then yeah great but if you are a, a great instructor but you're not too great at sort of selling and like upselling and oh yeah yeah you could buy that go on mm -hmm. then um then yeah you go down to the other uh, training route and yeah. if you have no personal skills and you just like sort of wrenches and doing things up and servicing regulators then yeah you can just go to the other uh, technical side of things mm -hmm. and and just service regulators so i can kind of seeing that becoming more of a thing where there's sort of two entities coming together yeah. and each of them deciding right I'm going to focus on this part. You're going to focus on that part. And we all sort of work together to yeah. create one big yeah. uh, sort of conglomerate, as it were. Yeah, I mean, that makes more sense than fighting each other and then both going bust. You're better off. Yeah. What skill set have you got? What skill set have I got? You know, let, let's try and mm. work something out to get it. So it's yeah. both beneficial <clears throat> to the both of us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought... I think I yeah i think another thing is is just the the general industry just um i'm trying to think like evolving is maybe the uh, the sort of the best word in that a lot of dive centers are still sort of being run by the original owner who started the dive center back in the 60s um they were a, a scuba diver and they just thought it was interesting they became an instructor so they they started a business but they they don't they didn't go to business school or anything because mm. there wasn't really business school so yeah i think now when we get like the new generation coming in and they can change things because at the moment it's it's all a little i don't know feral where people are just are uh, I'm, I'm not selling enough i'll just if i'm cheaper than the next person yeah. then i'll sell more but then the next person says, "Oh, they've dropped their prices. Oh, well, I'll just drop my prices." And it is just this: who can who can race to the cheapest price possible, fastest? And that's that's not really good in longevity. People need to uh, just sort of understand: oh, there, there is value in this product, and I do need to make margins. Mm. So um, I think, yeah, in, in the next sort of decade or so, we'll probably get the <clears throat> the the originals who might not have the best sort of business sense are going to start to delegate things out to the the newer crowd who have these kind of bit more modern business savvy sort of ideas so um yeah i imagine things will start to hopefully change so that everybody can start making a decent living from it and um so dive centers don't have to close just because they're making five percent on all their sales you need to make a lot more than mm. that 100 percent what you need to do 100% that'd be nice 100% yeah well guys and girls obviously if you're listening to this um, and you want to keep your thoughts over like we keep saying head over to our uh, YouTube channel um, the video goes live on this audio on Sunday morning so if you can wait till Sunday morning pop over there type in your comments mm. let us know do you think that the brick and mortar scuba stores like if we go from the retail side of things if it's just pure retail are they dead is brick and mortar stores dead um and then if it's a combination so if there is a dive center that teaches and sells what's what's the best way forward for them to be protected or for them to evolve on the high street um yeah mm. just let, let, i like to let, i like to let's have a good old discussion in the comments below about yeah. it all because it's one that we've we have spoke about this before in in different mm. you know different aspects or whatever but it's it's going to be ongoing um but 
that's that's the only thing obviously so scuba diving is a fantastic it's a brilliant sport or, although we shouldn't mm. call it a sport it's yeah, hobby, hobby recreation yeah. whatever whatever yeah. you want to say. it's a great it's a great it's a great Ac- activity it's a great <coughs> thing it's a it's an amazing yeah. <laughs> thing and the advancements and all the stuff and all the gear is fantastic but the only thing that's always nagged me from all the other sports that I do and having an, an insight mm. into this world they mm. don't you don't get with the times quick enough and it's because mm. of that is why you you, you know you, you have this conversation like you get yeah. people that are, you, you know they have a dive center that you, you or, or they have a you know they have a, a shop so it's like well, where's your website oh i built one back in the 90s cool you oh, really yeah. need to that's yeah. your that Diabolical. is your bread and butter yeah that is your bread and mm. butter it's cool to have a store but your bread and butter is the website you know what mm. i mean it's it's things like that but yeah let us know your thoughts in the comments please love to hear it um, do you believe that they're going to be dead? I personally think they will be. Um, high streets. What what will end up happening? All the big mm. brands will go because they're yep. going to go online because it's cheaper, yep, it's yep. more affordable. They can control it mm. a lot more, um, and it's more mm. profitable for them. Um, which mm. means then the longevity of the, you know the company exists. Blah 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 blah. Uh, but what will end up happening is the high streets will close. Uh, the people that own those buildings they'll start renting out to local businesses. They'll make the rent mm. cheaper because they can't get the big boys in, which then yeah. the high street itself will become kind of like what it used to be, kind of rather than... Yeah, a bit just, more local. Yeah, more, it'll be more local. There'll be more variancy, which again, for dive centres and potentially down the line, so if they if they can survive this, the, I don't know, the next 10 years on the high street, revamp their model, get a new store, mm. you know, they could, they could thrive once again, potentially, as long as... Mm the high streets get regenerated is that the word or you, or you know what i mean like that they re- yeah, regenerate yeah, yeah. themselves as long as that happens but like you say mm. it becomes more local it's more niche you don't go there to go yeah. to your, your your burtons even though it doesn't exist anymore than your top shop oh wait that doesn't exist anymore yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> you know what Woolworths. I mean? no yeah um, no uh, <laughs> Marks uh and Spencer's. no yeah. they're only doing food now um uh, <laughs> uh, uh bhf oh no uh Game, game. Apparently, game's going or has gone as well, which I'm not Buy surprised with. Hold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it is interesting to uh, to think about the future and, and sort of what's going to happen. Um, yeah, it's 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 weird, and yeah, with because it, it was kind of heading in that direction mm-hmm. anyway, with things going more digital, and yeah, sort of global lockdown just kind of accelerated that. Yeah. And I think people are still coming to terms with, yeah, I I I can buy it from home in my underpants, um, or completely why, naked, whatever you want, whatever if, floats your if boat. That's mate. your thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it's okay. Granted, you don't get it like that afternoon, but chances are your local dive center isn't going to have every single size of every single thing. Mm. Because some someone asked me um, years and years ago, "Oh, why why don't you have like?" Because um, all I want to buy is just the I think it was like an XTX fifty second stage, and I was like, "Well." one you're the first person that's asked me for just the second stage i can't remember the last time anyone's asked me for just uh, sort of first or second stages but also if i do that for the xtx 50 then the next person might want an xtx 40 mm-hmm. or the 100 or the 200 or the scuba pro then you've got to get the g260 and the s600 and the s620 ti and Okay, you want one specific item, but that just means that I have to buy 200 separate items, hold them in stock for the, I might want it one day. Mm. It, it's it's really tough to hold stock nowadays. Um, whereas if it's online and someone searches for it, it doesn't matter where they are in the country. Yeah, yeah, I want that. Thanks very much. Bought. And then it will arrive the next day or a day or two mm. later. As long as you don't need it exactly then and there, then yeah, online um, mm. buying is is definitely the future, unfortunately. But again, you can't train and learn online. You have to have that expertise, person to person. I still think what will end up happening yeah. is 
you like for like for Paddy. So like when you book a holiday, yeah, mm. you'll do the all, all the online training first. You do all of that first. Mm. That's all in house on computer. You print off your results or whatever. You email your results, and then when you get to your yeah. result, they look at it over, and then then you dive. That's that's the future. That's, that's going to be the online thing. That's that's kind of what they do now with with yeah. e learning. Yeah, you, but you it, do everything on your iPad. You select your dive center and your instructor of choice, and um, and then yeah, they uh, they just sort of have to just do the refer. Oh, pardon me. Do the referral and um, to, to take it from there. You don't don't really yeah. do classrooms anymore. Exactly. And and all the people that say no, that will never happen. That will never happen. Unfortunately, um, don't <laughs> take this personally. You're the older generation because yeah, there's going to be happening. thousands <laughs> of people that have only ever known that, and that's the way it is, and that's the way it's going yeah. to be. You can't yeah. hold on. Yeah. That's the thing, man. Scuba diving. Stop holding on to the past. Move with the like times. <laughs> I know. It's like I was saying, it's so, it's so weird. Like knowing a sport, everyone else embraces the change and changing in technology and making things more streamlined. And and don't get me wrong, scuba divers, you do do that in your very where you need yeah. to. But like, yeah, yeah, when it when it comes to basic stuff, it's like, mate, that can be so more streamlined. No, I want to go and I want to go in a. <laughs> the smelly store and talk to people and <laughs> have this book that everyone else has used and is drawn in it or something there was a fun reddit the other day and it was someone who's like oh i i used to dive a lot um but for whatever reason never got around to it it's been 10 years what what's changed and, and people are basically saying oh well well back plate and wings are, are more uh common um torches uh, are a lot brighter leds are, are more popular um <laughs> you're like no there, there has been changes but yeah they're, they're subtle well, in every in in the mountain bike world every six months there's something new even yeah, in snowboarding yeah. from bindings to screws to clothing technology like it's so weird mate a, a sport that's sorry an activity that yeah, is yeah. so awesome and obviously as well if it's not done right it can be dangerous you mm. know what I mean Yeah, you would have thought that there'd be I don't know cooler stuff I mean it is yeah the, it does happen it's just when when a new algorithm uh, sort of update comes up it's kind of like yeah unless you're really into it ugh, you, you don't want to read about calm down Mark compartments, I, can, I can see certain <laughs> things I know you love your algorithms calm down <laughs> Um, is that yeah, bolt snap to attached like to the end of it that's a bit weird Mark yeah. <laughs> bolt snap attached to the end of it <laughs> um, uh, so yeah and um, yeah like different designs of BCDs and inflators and uh, sort of internal routings uh, it's just yeah it's it does happen it's just yeah I think the the, the next generation needs to sort of come up and like put their footprint and just sort of say right well okay this is what we used to be like this is this is the future this is what we're going to go forwards mm. with um it'll Sno happen snooba that's the future snooba <laughs> cool man right shall we um <laughs> shall we wind this yeah, down come Marky Mark? Let's, let's wind um, this down so, yes, as, uh, as Sean mentioned earlier, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Follow us wherever you're listening to us, because um, let's face it, you've made it um, sort of over over, over an, an hour. hour. Um, yeah. So you clearly enjoy us. Um, so uh, so like, share and subscribe. Uh, rate us and comment sort of wherever you can. Uh, YouTube is the best place, but if you're uh, sort of listening to us on Spotify or, uh, or at, uh, iTunes, whatever it's called... Um, yeah, do it there. Don't forget to check out <laughs> simplyscuba.com. Uh, we have all sorts of interesting and new stuff. Um, we've got a few new brands uh, joining the website in the coming weeks, so that's going to be quite exciting. Uh, we'll let you know uh, who they are and when they arrive. When they arrive. Uh, at the moment, I want to keep that suspense running. Um, if you're looking at something, we have two uh, sort of buying options for you on the website just to make your life a little bit easier. We have Klarna, which is a 0% finance option. There's a few different choices for you, different ways that you can uh, sort of put some things on finance, make it a little bit easier, a bit safer for you. <clears throat> we also have Adyen, which again is a, uh, a mechanism of buying things online. It encrypts all of your data, so even we don't really get to see it, I don't think. So I do, I get everyone's data. I get it, and then I sell it. <laughs> I 
So I it's do not do glitch. that. In, internet <laughs> fusion, I do not do that. <laughs> I do not really sell people's uh, data. Don't forget to check out the Two Minute Foundation. If you bought anything from us, uh, you'll notice on a lot of the uh, the cardboard packaging that it comes in, it mentions the Two Minute Foundation. On a lot of the uh, the shows, myself and Sean, we're wearing Two Minute Foundation shirts. Um, it's basically you take out two minutes of your uh, of your day just to help clean up your local environment. There's the Beach Clean app as well that you can download onto your phone. You take a snapshot of what you've collected. But they also have cleaning stations. You might notice one where you live. It's one of those small little a frames and it comes with a uh, litter picker and some plastic bags so that you can help clean up your, your local environment and if you have any questions comments queries uh, anything that you want myself or Sean to discuss on the on the Friday show in your comment use the hashtag ask mark just makes it a lot easier for us to find and we will chat about it on uh, on Friday thank you for listening everybody and of course safe diving stay classy scuba divers the Deco Stop podcast is produced and recorded by Simply Scuba, the UK's number one dive store. Visit today at simplyscuba.com.